Wow, that was a good one! Oh my god, wow. And I can't so much. What a wonderful world. Welcome back to my channel everyone. Today I thought I would talk a little bit about my plastic free slash zero waste lifestyle in regards to my makeup routine. This right here is my little makeup case that goes with me everywhere I go. In this little case is the maximum amount of products that I could potentially need for day to day use. Now what I mean by that is that with the products that are in here I could do my go to lightwear look or I could go full glam if need be. In total I only have 12 products in here and I have I think like 8 applicators, so like sponges and brushes. Now I want to start this video by saying that almost none of the products in here are reusable. None can be returned back to the store or refilled. And honestly, I'm not even sure if I would actually be able to at home recycle any of these products. Considering all the products in here are different plastics and I haven't done my research to figure out what the most effective way to recycle them is, I saved them. In this big paper bag is all of the empty makeup, bathroom, beauty products that I have accumulated over the last year. The reason I keep the empty containers is because I do eventually want to find out how to recycle them accordingly, but it's also incredibly handy to have in case I ever feel like making my own makeup. Here we have an old compact, an old soap dispenser, an old toner bottle, some old shampoo bottles, literally everything in here all my future needs. Something that I think it is incredibly important to note moving forward with a zero waste lifestyle is that you do not have to go out to the store and immediately purchase all of the reusable things. Now of course by all means if you have exactly zero of what you need left go out to the store and find your reusable, refillable alternatives. However if you're someone that's in the same situation as I am I highly advise finishing the products that you already have. For me, I have a ridiculous amount of makeup, thousands of dollars worth of products sitting in a massive case right beside my bed. A year ago, I made a vow to myself that I would not purchase a single makeup product if I still had products available in my massive makeup case. If I did happen to run out of a specific product and I didn't have an alternative in my case, only then would I look into the greener alternatives of buying reusable or refillable products from environmentally friendly brands, or in the future perhaps, make my own makeup. Hence why I have all my old containers still. The way I see it is if I were to go and shop for my reusable, refillable products straight off the bat, not only am I financially burdening myself, because I've already spent thousands of dollars on all of the makeup that I have right here in my home, but I'm also deeming all of the unused products useless. By throwing out these products before I finish them, because they're not reusable or refillable or not zero waste, is actually generating more waste. This is super important to remember when trying to transition into a zero waste lifestyle. Use what you already have. Once it's finished, try and be resourceful and see what you can do with the empty packaging. Perhaps you can make your own makeup. If you can't make your own makeup, do some research and see if the store that you bought it from will take it back and refill it or possibly take it out back and recycle it accordingly. If the store is unable to do that, research even more and see how you can at home recycle it properly. Whether that's making your own makeup products or really trying to identify which recycling bin it goes into. I decided today that I would go through and do a full makeup routine using all of the products here in my smaller case so you can really get an insight into what my zero waste lifestyle is like. I'd like to note that not all of the products that I will be using today are animal cruelty free and this is purely because when I was younger I wasn't ignorant but I certainly wasn't going out and searching for particular brands that were animal cruelty free. I will be making note of which products are cruelty free and which products are not and giving my recommendations. I'm going to let you on a little secret. I don't recommend any of the ones that have been tested on animals purely because they've been tested on animals. I personally have not purchased a single new makeup product in over a year. However, if I were to purchase a new makeup product, I would definitely do my research and make sure that they were animal cruelty free. With all of that being said, let's get into the makeup look. Alrighty, so here I am, baby faced me, fresh out of the shower. I am very white and covered in freckles, ginger traits, but I'm very confident in the skin that I am in and more often than not, I will actually go out looking exactly like this. But for the purpose of today's video, I will be doing my full glam look. It's not really a glam, it's just like, my full coverage date night or 
filming video type of look. Because I'm so new to the whole YouTube thing, I'm really looking at myself in the viewfinder thinking, wow, I look super white and I'm wondering if that's because my camera is too exposed right now or if I'm really just that super white. So the first thing I do, eh, 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 hair, is this huge jar of pawpaw ointment. Open that up, basic, put it on, coat my lips. Oh, oh, oh. Definitely they don't look uh, too moist. I just don't want any of those weird things where like the saliva connects your two lips together. You know what I'm talking about? Then I move into the case. So the first product I will be going in with is this Makeup Forever Redness Correcting Primer. I put this all over my face. Now I do believe that Makeup Forever tests on animals. Don't go out and buy it. I use the product whilst I have it and then it's gone. Taking a Morphe brush, I'm just blending this in. The next step in my makeup process is of course foundation, however I have a tendency not to use foundation and steer more toward um, tinted moisturiser and that's exactly what I have here. This is um, Becca Skin Love Weightless Blur Foundation but it is more of a tinted moisturiser and it is in the colour Sand. Now Becca is and has always been animal cruelty free so I do recommend purchasing this product. I take the same Morphe brush and I do one single pump. I just take what's on there and sort of lightly dot the perimeter of my face. With no real rhyme or reason and no technique at all. <laughs> Once I have dotted that all over my face, I then go in with the same brush and I buff it in, starting at the outer perimeter of my face. Outer perimeter. <laughs> buff in the center of my face. I also drag it down my neck <laughs> because I can never seem to match my foundation correctly. And that's that. The next product I go in for my full glam makeup is Tarte C Concealer, and this is in the shade Fair Light. This concealer matches my skin pretty well. I don't use concealer to highlight, I use it to conceal. Just like the Becca, Tarte is also 100% cruelty free. Open this little guy up. I'm going to three dot it on the chin, on the jawline, a little bit on the nose, and then whatever's left over, I go in these little triangles. I still do the classic triangle thing that you see all of beauty gurus do. However, it just doesn't highlight my face like they do. Go back in with the same Morphe brush. This is Morphe S94. It's like a little flat top kabuki looking thing. So I stipple the chin first to give myself optimal coverage. Then I blend the jaw concealer and I also blend that down my neck a little bit just so there's no harsh lines. I then go into the nose and I'll stipple the nose. Then I also go in and I stipple under the eye. Now the reason why I say the eye to the last bit is it gives the concealer just a little bit of a chance to sort of set in a way. And I know that sounds kind of odd but for me it's less easier to blend, which also sounds weird. But I feel like in that case all of the product is actually staying exactly where I've put it rather than sort of dispersing around my face. And that's that. Whoa, I look crazy. Oh, wow. <laughs> I look nuts. <gasps> Terrifying. So the next product I go in with is this Natio. Natio? I'm not really sure how it's pronounced actually. Translucent Loose Powder. And this is hella messy. To apply the translucent powder, I actually use this little disposable sponge, which I got in Hold that thought. This Too Faced Compact, which I've only just finished, and obviously I have kept. The reason being, like I mentioned before, is because I don't actually know how to recycle this properly. I also don't believe the store will take the compact back to refill or restock or reuse, etc. So I've decided to keep it just in case I want to make my own makeup in the future. I have this handy little compact. But yeah, I kept the little sponge that came with it. I like the way that the sponge applies product. So dipping into the translucent powder, I am then going to press it under my eye to stop any of the fine lines or wrinkles from setting in. And I'm also going to press it on my eyelid. Do the same for the other side and then bring the leftover powder onto my nose and into those like little crevice bits. I actually look terrifying. Oh my God, I look frightening. I'm also going to press it onto my chin and around my smile lines. 
Now, I don't dust off the excess powder. It's kind of like baking, but it's not really baking. I don't use as much powder as everyone else does when they bake because I really don't like that sort of suffocated feeling on my skin. But anyways, yeah, I just let that sit just for a little bit and I will dust it off shortly. So the next product I go in with is this Hula Caramel Bronzer by Benefit. Now, let me tell you real quick. Don't trust everything that the ladies in Sephora tell you. One of the ladies, when I asked, said that Benefit was actually animal cruelty free. It is in fact not. And when I was starting to become more conscious and aware of my purchases before I tried being zero waste, I bought a lot of Benefit based on her telling me that it's animal cruelty free. A simple Google search, everybody, if you're unsure, is Benefit cruelty free? The first link that comes up in big capital letters is Benefit is not animal cruelty free. However, I do still use it because I have product left and I am trying to go into the zero waste lifestyle. So I aim to use this until it is empty and I will never recommend nor will I purchase this product again. Taking this Morphe brush, I don't have a number. I've had it that long that I must have wiped it off with use. But this is what the bristles look like anyways. It's kind of tapered and it's very fluffy. It's great for bronzing. I dip into this bronzer like a mother. It's going on my gigantic seven head. Just eliminate the seven head. That's what we're looking for. We want to have a one head. So I'm just really buffing this as low as I can, almost down to the eyebrow. You thought that was it, but it's not. I go in again. This Hula Bronzer as well is very pigmented, so I have a tendency to apply all of the product onto my seven head, and then with whatever's left over on the brush, I bring down around my cheekbones and underneath my chin, so I don't have that little gobble gobble chin happening. So I go in a second time, once again, very haphazardly applying it, sort of at my receding hairline. Once I'm happy with the coverage there, I then lightly dust on my cheekbone and onto my cheeks. The reason why I do onto my cheeks is because I'm not contouring, I'm bronzing. So that's warming up the face. I also dust it down my nose, on my eyelids, and then on my double chin. We're just trying to warm up the entire face, that's all. Because I'm so white. And there we have it, she's looking warm, she's looking healthy. It's not looking sick anymore. I then dip back into the Natio translucent powder with that same sponge as before. And I lightly press the powder just underneath my cheekbones and I don't blend it. The reason I do this is because I have a very flat face. So even though I don't contour, I only bronze, when you cut underneath it with the translucent powder, it kind of lifts the entire face. Officially done with the devil powder. I say devil powder because it literally gets everywhere. The next step to my makeup routine is my eyes and for my eyes I use the Huda Beauty Coral Obsessions palette. Now Huda Beauty's brand is cruelty free, however their parent company does test on animals. So do with that information as you will. Buy it, don't buy it. I personally wouldn't recommend Huda Beauty's products. In saying that, I do continue to use it because I am trying to eliminate my unnecessary waste. So as you can see, I usually dip into these two shades and to apply that, I use this Sephora concealing brush. It's very fluffy on the end, hence why I use it for my eyes as a blending brush. So I place that directly into the crease, bring it down onto the eyelid and up onto the bridge of my nose. And then I taper it out, past the eyebrow into this sort of like sleek V. I then obviously do the same to the other side, bringing it onto the bridge of the nose, applying it to the lid, and then tapering it out into that long V. The reason why I taper it out so far and so upward is because I'm essentially just trying to lift my face. The same process of what I did with my cheeks, I am also applying to my eyes. I then take this thin sort of tapered brush. This is from the same Sephora collection, and it is in fact an eyeshadow brush. I then dip it into the same two shades and apply it to my lower lid. And finally, the last step with this Huda Beauty palette, I take this fun little fluffy guy. I believe I got this in like some kind of bronzing kit, but I take these two pinker shades up the top here, dip the brush into it and dust it right over the bridge of my nose and a little bit on the tip. I then take this tiny little kabuki brush. It was gifted to me. I don't know what brand it is. I don't know anything about them, but I just use it to simply dust off the rest of that translucent powder that could have been sitting on my face. Now the next step is setting spray. Now I know that seems kind of odd 
Usually people will apply a setting spray after they finish their makeup. However, like I stated before, I really hate that dry, <laughs> suffocating feeling. So I want to get moisture back into my face as soon as possible. And to do that, I am using the Urban Decay All Nighter Makeup Setting Spray. Urban Decay is cruelty free. So by all means, purchase this product. I highly recommend it and would purchase it again if I was not trying to do a zero waste lifestyle. This setting spray is, however, definitely on its last legs, and it is the only other setting spray that I own in my makeup case. So I will be forced to either buy a new setting spray, in which case I will repurchase this, or make my own, in which case I will be reusing this bottle. So shake it up. Then I coat my face. In the setting spray. Now whilst my setting spray is still wet, I will be going in and doing my brows with this Hourglass Pencil. This is in the shade Auburn and it is animal cruelty free. Now the reason why I do this while my brows are still wet is because I find that this little pencil bit, it's like a crayon, can kind of get stuck whereas when my eyebrows are wet it glides on very smoothly for a better application. So I just feather this first starting at the arch, so the second third of the brow right here and I then drag it into one single fine line following my natural eyebrow and then I tweak it up at the end just a little bit once again trying to create that lifted effect. I then go in with the other side, same deal, starting at the arch, lightly feather strokes, eventually forming one single line where I drag it down to the tail and lift it up at the end so it lifts the face. Oddly enough, I actually get complimented on my eyebrows maybe three times a week. It's a very strange compliment to receive, but it's always received well by me. This is the trick. You're gonna take the same pencil and you're actually going to overdraw. So you're gonna start the brow further in than you usually would and create one single line underneath and that's it. Now the reason why I overdraw my eyebrows inward so much is because the closer your eyebrows are together, the smaller the bridge of your nose will appear. So your nose will actually end up looking smaller. Not only that, but it helps to lift the face. So it's giving me more space in the eye. Once I've drawn those two lines going inwards, I then take the opposite end, which has a little spoolie on it, and I push the product that was in the arch of my brow forward and then lightly feather out that line just so there's a nice even gradient to the brow. Once that's done, I get my finger and lightly wipe. Once again, pushing that product from the second part of the brow into the first part of the brow, lightly feathering that line so it's not as harsh and then wiping the excess. So in my day-to-day -day life, if I was to be going out to a dinner or on a date, etc., I would then apply the Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Highlighter. One side is lightning dust and the other side is fire crystal. However, when I'm filming videos, I do not use highlighter. I don't want any sort of like greasy look or flashback in the footage. Fenty Beauty does claim to be cruelty free and I would 100% recommend this product as well as any of the other products by the Fenty range. I have her foundation and it is my holy grail. I love it. The next step is mascara and the product I am using is of course from Benefit, like I mentioned before. I purchased a bunch of Benefit products not knowing that they were not cruelty free. This is the Their Real Mascara and I have been using this for a matter of years. Not this specific mascara, but it is a mascara that I have repurchased time and time again. I will not be now that I know that Benefit is not cruelty free. I'm going to do this part off of camera just because everybody knows how mascara is applied. I only do the top lashes, I do not apply anything to the lower lashes. Once again, I'm trying to open my eyes and I find that having too much darkness around them really closes them off. Once I've applied my mascara, I actually give it just a little bit of time to dry before applying my eyeliner. I have a tendency to sort of smear and get mascara everywhere and then it gets all over my makeup. Whilst I'm waiting for it to dry, I am going to apply my lips. Now for my lips, I don't use lipstick. I find lipstick very drying. What I do use is a lip liner that matches the natural colour of my lips and a pore pore ointment or like a lip balm. The reason why I use the lip liner is because I find the foundation kind of blurs the two together, my skin and the shape of my lips, so I just want to bring life back into them. The reason why I use a shade that's the same colour as my lips is because I don't want it to be over the top or look unnatural. I'm merely just trying to get that shape back. I personally don't know where this lip liner is from. The label has completely rubbed off, so I cannot tell you what brand it is or if it's cruelty free. So I don't overdraw, I just trace the natural shape of my lip. 
After I've applied the lip liner, I'm just going to go ahead and put pore ointment on them and they're going to look really plump and juicy. I actually always get asked if I've got lip filler or if I've had work done and this is just my secret. Tell me I'm wrong though, do these not look super super juicy? Ta -da. Now the last step to my makeup routine and a step that I do almost every single time I want to go out is just applying eyeliner. Now the reason why I do this, whether this is a no makeup makeup look, a light makeup look, a full glam look, is because it helps with that lifting of the face. Now the product I use is this MAC Black Track Gel Liner. MAC is working towards being cruelty free, but it is not there yet. So I do not support buying this product. And this is going to seem strange, but the applicator I use to apply this gel liner is actually an old Kat Von D liquid liner stick. The reason why I like it is because the applicator is so thin towards the end that it makes it really easy to just glide on. Kat Von D is animal cruelty free, and this was a great liquid liner. However, it's run out. And like I said, I'm trying to be resourceful and I'm finding new uses for old products. So I brought the camera in a little bit closer because in my day to day life, a lot of people ask me how I do my liquid liner. I don't put liquid liner all over the eye. The reason being, like I stated earlier, I want the eyes to appear very open and black is going to close them off. What I do do is a little triangle right in the outer corner here and it goes out, joins back in and that's it. I dip my little Kat Von D old eyeliner into my MAC pot. Take the brush and do one single line outwards. I then swap it around and I connect the triangle. I'm now going to do the same to the other side. So I'm just drawing a line out. Swapping the brush around. So I started like that. I swapped it around and then I bring The tip back in to the top of my eyelashes. And that's it, it's literally perfect eyeliner every time. I'm just gonna keep you zoomed in really quickly just so you can get a close up of what I've actually done to my face whilst my hair is up and out of the way. I feel so funny doing this. Ta da! Take my hair out. I don't do much to it, I just center part it and it falls how it falls. And this is the finished look. I personally feel better about using these products that I already own till they are completely empty and then figuring out whether or not I can repurpose them, reuse them, refill them, or recycle them. At the end of the day, people that are in this movement, the zero waste lifestyle, are trying to convey this message to others. It's not a matter of being perfect or making all of your own products or never purchasing anything ever again. It's just a matter of thinking how you can make better choices with what you've got. And for me, this is a huge part of it. When people ask me, hey, how do I buy makeup or how do I do makeup in a zero waste friendly way? This is my way. This is what works for me. And when I finally run out of the thousands of products of makeup that I have, then I'll have to start to think of something different. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. If you did enjoy this video or it's been informative or helped you in any kind of way, please do give it a like, show support, comment, subscribe, and share. It would help me greatly. It's funny, for the first time, I don't have to burp at the end of the video. <laughs> Still doesn't know how to exit a video. <laughs> Why am I shimmying?